This is laboratory data interpretation and this is serology or PER4. Uh, serology is pretty much a broad area of laboratory analysis. It includes blood banking, endocrine tests, some microbiology, and urinalysis. Blood banking. Uh, several common tests for matching blood uh, before administration have to be sure that it's matched. It will cause a hemolytic reaction if not. ABO typing identifies the sample of the blood. RH factor identifies the RH antigen on the RBCs and this would be a negative or a positive, say like your O positive or O negative, this would be the RH factor. A direct Coombs test measures the antibodies on the RBC surface and an indirect Coombs test measures antibodies to the RBCs in the blood serum. So this gives us kind of a, a pretty good recollection of what is going to happen whenever we introduce this blood into the system. And this is the general blood typing, uh, type A, type B, type AB, and type O. And each one of these has a antigen on them. So the type A blood identifies it on the surface. I am type A blood with the surface antigen of A. Same way with type B blood, surface antigen of B. The type AB blood has both surface antigen of A and B. The type O has neither. Uh, doesn't have any surface antigen whatsoever. Type A blood would have anti-B antibodies, so if you put these two together, they're going to fight. And the same way, type B blood would have anti-A antibodies, so you can put those together. Type AB neither has anti-A nor does it have anti-B. And then type O has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. So type O, this one right here, is the universal donor. The reason it's the universal donor, it has no surface antigens to have an antigen antibody reaction. It does not contain A, B, or any RH factor. If you have O negative, that would be the absolute universal donor. A, B, is referred to as the universal recipient. That's because it doesn't have any antibodies to have a reaction with anyone. So you could actually run all of these into this person here without any problems whatsoever as long as the RH factors were matched. Endocrine tests. Cortisol. Uh, measures adrenaline, adrenal cortical function, and this is going to be our uh, steroids that are produced by our adrenaline gland. The normal values on this for male and female are going to be 5 to 25. A high value on this would say Cushing syndrome, which is hyperadrenalism, or say that there was some kind of pituitary t tumor in play. Uh, the pituitary t tumors would give us an excessive release of adrenal cortotropic hormone, which would overshoot our cortisol levels. Low value would be Addison's disease which would be hypoadrenalism or cortical destruction. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, normal value on this is going to be 0.5 to 5. Uh, a high value would say thyroid failure because the thyroid isn't picking up the TSH and working with it. Or you had a pituitary tumor since THF TSH comes from the pituitary gland. Low value would say hyperthyroidism, so it's running too much and burning up too much TSH, or pituitary failure. T3 measures trio, triodothyronine, or T3 is a lot easier to say than that. It's one of our thyroid hormones. Normal value on this is going to be 60 to 181. A high value would say that they had hyperthyroidism, too much of this. A low value would say that they had hypothyroidism. T4 measures L-thyroxine. Normal values should be 4.5 to 10.9. A high value would be hyperthyroidism and a low value would be hypothyroidism. Free T4 measures free thyroxine. Normal values on this should be 0.8 to 2.7.
high value would say that there is too much thyroid hormone or you had hyperthyroidism and a low value would say you don't have enough hormone uh, thyroid hormone would make you have hypothyroidism microbiology uh, gram stains gram stains are done quite often in microbiology uh, culture is placed on a microscopic slide reagents introduced to the culture and they introduce crystal violet which is blue staining and Graham's iodine solution. Now, micro, microorganisms take up the stain based on the nature of their cell wall, and this is how we identify what type of microorganism. So, back when we were talking in pharmacology about gram positive, gram negative staining, this is how we tell which ones are gram positive or gram negative. The slide is examined under a microscope, and the reason that it stains positive is because of the ex excessive amount of this layer here in the cell wall which is peptoglycan. If you'll notice the gram negative has a very small amount of it here. So this one here doesn't have enough peptoglycan to actually pick up this, the the uh, violet stain so but on the cellular surface it will pick up the saffron stain so this is going to be a gram negative type of bacteria and this is going to be a gram positive type of bacteria and each one of these have different characteristics each one of these are different types of bacteria examples staph strep and so on your analysis uh, pH of the urine measures the hydrogen ion concentration or the acidity of the urine. Normal values on this, uh, 5 to 9, the mean's about 6. A high value would say that you had a urinary tract infection or you've had too much bicarbonate use. A uh, low value on this, acidosis or overhydration. So a low value would say that it was more acidic a high value would say that it was more alkalotic or alkalosis. Specific gravity, and if we want to think of this as the concentration or the thickness of the urine, normal value on an adult, 1.01 to 1.035. On a child, 1.01 to 1.018. A high value or a high amount of concentration would say that your patient is dehydrated or they have an increased antidiuretic <coughs> hormone secretion. A low value would be from overhydration. Uh, whenever we secrete ADH, antidiuretic hormone or antipene hormone, it's going to make our urine more concentrated it's going to pick up as much water as it possibly can. Protein measures the protein in the urine. Normal value is negative. A high value could suggest renal disease or preeclampsia or pregnancy induced hypertension. Low values have no clinical significance. Sugar measures the sugar in the urine. Normal value is negative. High value, uh, if you are putting out glucose or sugar in the urine, diabetes or possibly stress from increased adrenaline hormones, um, more commonly known as glucocorticoids, low value has no clinical significance. Ketones, measures ketones in your urine, normal value is negative. A high value may say malnutrition, this is going to be the byproduct of fat metabolism. DKA, which would also be a byproduct of fat metabolism. It would have ketotic acid and lactic acidosis. And then dieting, more, more commonly known as starvation dieting, but dieting nonetheless. Low values on this have no clinical significance. Nitrates measures nitrates, nitrites measures nitrites in the urine. Normal value is going to be negative. A high value would be suggestive of a urinary tract infection low values have no clinical significance. Leukocyte esterase or white blood cells um, depends on if you have the the dip strip kind or you're running it through a machine that actually is looking for it. Um, measures leukocyte esterase in the urine. 
normal values are negative. High values would suggest that well, why do you have leukocytes in your urine? Uh, would suggest a UTI. Low value has no clinical significance. Bilirubin measures bilirubin in the urine. Normal values is negative. High values would be suggestive of liver disease. Low value has no clinical significance. Urobiliogen measures urobiliogen in the urine and it's a product of bilirubin production, urobiliogen. Normal value is negative. High value would say hepatic insufficiency. Uh, low value has no clinical significance. Casts measures hyaline cast in the urine. Normal value, uh, variable, may present with few or it may have a very few amount of cast in there. High value, kidney dysfunction. Low value has no clinical significance. White blood cells measures the white blood cells in the urine. Normal value uh, less than four to five um, per per field <clears throat> per high powered field. High value would mean that the, you have an infection. A low value has no clinical significance. Red blood cells or the amount of blood that's in the urine. Um, red blood cells in the urine normal value is less than two to three per high powered field. A uh, high value would say that you had some sort of trauma, you have an infection going, or possibly a kidney stone. Low value has no clinical significance. As far as urine goes, we can get some toxicology off of it. Test for almost every substance. Um, recently, we've come across uh, things like K2 and bath salts. There are no current screenings for those two uh, types of drugs, or those designer drugs. Uh, some may be sophisticated, not readily available. Uh, triage screens for opiates, benzos, THC or marijuana, cocaine, amphetamines and barbiturates. Uh, tests also used to determine serum levels of medication. So if the patient was subtherapeutic or therapeutic or they were in the toxic levels. <clears throat> this ends part four. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. <clears throat> Roy.smith at redlandcc.edu or smithard.msa.net.